I was born in 1930. I lived in New York City. My parents had come from Central Europe ten years earlier because of the inflation there. Um, I was, and in the, my earliest memories are of the rise of Hitler uh, uh, and uh, the Nazis in Germany. My parents were very concerned about that. It was a matter of discussion, constant discussion in our home. They help people leave, who wish to leave. Um, and so I was politically oriented to the left, to anti-fascism uh, from the very, from very young years. Uh, and then um, after the, uh, the war ended, I was still, uh, New York City, of course, was a, was a political center in the United States, so one could go to rallies in Madison Square Garden and all that sort of thing, which I did do. Uh, and uh, when we came to the 1948 election, uh, that was when Henry Wallace uh, was running for um, president uh, on a very radical platform, and I was active in something called Students for Wallace. But by this point, I was in, in college and I was in various kinds of organizations uh, and continued that. Uh, and a big turning point, I, I was, I had this interest in India, actually. Uh, I, I was very uh, interested in, 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 the, in, in the Indian National, National Congress uh, and in Gandhi and, and so forth, so I, I followed all of that. And I thought I was going to, you know, perhaps work on India, but because I was involved in, in something else where I met uh, Africans, uh, I shifted my interest to, from India uh, to Africa. And, and because I was good in French, uh, I, from the very beginning, was interested both in what was going on in, in English-speaking Africa and in French-speaking Africa. So uh, I came to the point where I was doing my dissertation. I did a dissertation um, uh, on the role of voluntary organizations in, in, in the politics of, of, of British and French West Africa. And I then traveled a considerable number of times in Africa, which uh, gave me a, a different perspective of the world completely. Uh, I, I, so, some people, uh, how shall I say, many people when they went to Africa tried to impose uh, a Western point of view on them. I was educated by the by my African friends to, to see the world as as Africans saw it uh, and, and 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 that became a, 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 a long-term commitment so um, I, I continued to be active in all sorts of things and indeed one of the big turning point was 1968 when there was this what I saw as a, as a worldwide revolution and I was very active at Columbia University where I was a junior professor in, 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 in supporting the students um, and trying to mediate between them and the administration. Uh, so I, 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 uh, this consolidated if you will uh, and undid some of my simplistic liberal ideas uh, that I had had before. And then I became a professor uh, and uh, actually um, I, I, I came here to Montreal for four years um, uh, to be and was active in, in movements 
here. Uh, in Oxfam, Quebec, for example, which, is, uh, which was quite a radical organization at the time, I'm not sure how much it is now, uh, I, I, I was active in that uh, and uh, attempted to uh, protect them from uh, uh, the sense that they, they shouldn't have a Quebec organization but only a Canada-wide organization and so forth. And ever since then, I have always felt that uh, there was no way someone could be apolitical. Um, uh, being apolitical is simply being in support of the status quo, and that is a political position. So I never saw the conflict between uh, activism and scholarship. I, I, they aren't the same thing, but I never saw the conflict between them. And I always felt that I could be a good scholar, uh, informed by my moral principles and my political preferences, but still be a, a good scholar and, and nonetheless be very active politically and ought to be very active politically. So there I am, here I am now, uh, many years later, again in Montreal, uh, and uh, I still feel that I should be uh, an activist as well as an intellectual. The first time I came to Africa, well, I, I actually came quite early. I, I came to an inter a World Youth Meeting in, in Dakar in 1952 and then traveled around for a week to other parts of French West Africa um, and uh, I, met, I met some of the people involved in the, uh, in the movements for independence. Um, uh, uh, already in 1952, so uh, by the time, and then I came back again in 1955 for another meeting, and, and then by 1956, um, I, I mean I was uh, into my dissertation topic uh, uh, already, so um, uh, this was a process whereby I got pulled in further and further to uh, networks of people in various countries in, in West Africa. Uh, I was the, there at the beginning as a, a youth movement. Well, in Africa it turns out at that time, youth was a category that was stretched quite further than one would think so people who represented youth organizations were in their 30s, 40s and even in their 50s uh, and the, the point is these people whom I got to know uh, two years later or three years later became prime ministers, foreign ministers, uh, all, all, all sorts of things so I, 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 I began to have uh, 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 a series of contacts um, uh, throughout South Africa. Then I stretched it to East Africa. Um, uh, I couldn't get into uh, South Africa at the time. The, the, um, I was in fact on a blacklist of, apparently of the, um, of the apartheid regime. And uh, uh, I similarly with with Portuguese speaking Africa they wouldn't give me visas to, to get in but that just strengthened what I was doing uh, and um, uh, later uh, I, I, uh, uh, after the first wave of independence there was the last uh, uh, attempts which were in Portuguese speaking Africa as well as what is now called Zimbabwe and what is now called Tanzania uh, and um, uh, I, I was not only, I could speak to all, all of these people because I, I knew them all 
uh, and linguistically I was able to do it. Uh, so I became a, a sort of Africa specialist until I started writing about it in, 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 in my work and I suddenly realized that I was running after headlines. That is to say, I was trying to explain what happened today and then tomorrow, and the next day, and I said, this is, this is crazy. Uh, it, 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 I have to find out. They were being called at the time New Nations. And I said to myself, uh, if there are new nations, there must have been old nations. <laughs> And maybe I should look at the old nations to see how, how they became whatever. Uh, I, that was a very crazy idea, but it was a lucky one because what it got me to do was to start to read about what I thought was old nations in the 16th century and how they became modern in quotation marks and so forth. And that's what got me into writing about the modern world system. So uh, there I was, and I've been doing that ever since. Uh, I also write uh, about immediate events, too. I, uh, in 1998, I started this system of um, bi-weekly commentaries, the first and the 15th of every month, and I'm trying to analyze uh, what is going on now in the light of the long durée the, uh, 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 to, to give some context for, for what is going on. Well, these are, these are political interventions, of course. They're political commentaries, but they, they are informed by my scholarship as well. So. In 2001, I, ha I don't. I had been involved with uh, some of the people who were part of the founding of the World Social Forum, but the first one in 2001, I did not come. And at that time, they had a system where they invited speakers, and one of the people who was active in the World Social Forum. Uh, put pressure on them or suggested to them that they invite me to the 2002 meeting which and I came here to it was in Porto Alegre and of course as soon as I came I was converted to the importance of the World Social Forum and I began to attend quite regularly I haven't come to every single one but I've come to most of them I was in Porto Alegre at least, at least twice. I was in uh, Mumbai in India. I was in uh, Nairobi in, in, in Kenya, and then I was in Dakar in Senegal. So, uh, and here I am in Montreal. So, I've, 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 I've attended quite a few. I'm a great believer in the World Social Forum. I think it's, well, I used to say it's the only game of town. Uh, it's the only place where there is a world movement for transformation. But of course it has lots of problems and it's in difficulties because of the shift in the world situation. I mean that it's, you know, the World Social Forum is not exempt from the realities of the world. And while we had a good 10 years maybe from about 2000, to 2010, a good decade for, for progressive movements, especially in Latin America, but not only in Latin America, in many other parts of the world. Um, what happened was, by the by processes internal to the world system, right, things moved in the other direction and we, we, we suddenly are, as somebody said yesterday in a meeting, uh, we are in a defensive mode rather than an offensive mode and frankly people aren't sure how to handle it and so there's an immense amount of debate 
in the World Social Forum and in other progressive movements. Some people talk of the global justice movement as a sort of bigger tent of which the World Social Forum is one part. Um, there, there's a tremendous debate about how the World Social Forum can be meaningfully participate in, 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 in the present defensive mode. Uh, and uh, we've been debating that at this meeting, and as I said in this meeting, we've been debating that ever since I came in 2002, but we're debating it with more intensity now, and somehow people feel we should do something that's more politically active, but we're not sure quite how to do it and how to preserve the World Social Forum as a, as a space where people can meet, etc. So there we are. I'm, I'm not sure I, I can, uh, I mean, uh, children, I have grandchildren, those are very happy moments. My youngest grandchild has just become 12 and she came to this World Social Forum because she's a, a child activist uh, and she wanted to come very much uh, and to get involved uh, uh, further so uh, that made me very happy. Ninety-six-eight is a big turning point for me, right. I think it's a big turning point for the world but, and I've written on that. Uh, I've written quite a bit about 1968 as a, as a turning point, but it was a, certainly a turning point for me personally. In what ways? Well, in, 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 in how should I say, in my understanding of the limitations of uh, the possibility of uh, transformation uh, um, how shall I say, uh, 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 a bit-by-bit -bit transformation of the world just wouldn't work and that we needed uh, 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 an, another world being possible. Or as they say here in Montreal now, another world is necessary and the necessary is possible. So. Uh, I mean, and the, the, the sense of having that feeling is something I didn't have before 1968. So for me, it's a turning point. So I hope this helps you understand what was going on in my life. And maybe if it's of help to anyone, I'll be very glad. I, I don't intend to stop being an activist as long as I'm sort of on two feet. Thank you.